Hi, this is Shadi. This story comes from the book Line of Duty Death Police Officer Award. The book will be linked in the description. I've discussed this book before, but today I'm going to add one more story from it just to show the severity of training and also how I'm actually thankful for a lot of the measurements that's been added throughout the decades regarding safety. Yes, sometimes we do say things like, you know, judo is devolving or going in the wrong direction in many ways, like banning the leg grabs or adding too many restrictions around the gripping, etc. And personally, I do agree. However, when it comes to safety measures, I am very glad. And today I will discuss how it used to be back in the day and how easy it was to get either severely injured or passing away. So today's story is about a head patrol officer by the name of Yoshiwara Fumiyaki who sustained an injury to the neck and passed away because of it. And since he was technically on the line of duty, he was given the status of a martyr or Junshi in Japanese. So the story happened on October 4th in 1929 in Oita Prefecture. There was the All Japan Police Officer Judo Tournament uh, that was held. And there during his match against an officer from Nakasu, he hit his head very strongly and it caused his neck to bend and actually fracturing his neck, dislocating the third vertebrae. And he passed away two days later on the 6th of October. So something as simple as adding springs to the mats or banning techniques that otherwise do not give the practitioner the option such as Kani Basami. Yes, I am glad it's banned and I am glad that there are safety measures like against spine locks and pulling someone by the neck back and from there you in order to turn them over or actually pinning them or pile driving them on their heads these things yes i do agree it does not contribute to the longevity of judokas or jujutsu practitioners and in our modern world they have no place we have our jobs we have our responsibilities and we want to practice judo for the rest of our lives just simply putting springs underneath the mats, it will change everything. Um, these things happened all the time, simply because of the bad equipments like the tough mats and the tough floor underneath the mats and also the lack of rules. Um, back then, it was when someone simply gives up or becomes unconscious and from there, they would lose the match. So there are a few written reports or written um, words by the old practitioners who participated in those types of tournaments where there were little to no rules. And you can see how bad it used to be. Let me quote none other than the guardian of the Kodokan, Sakujiro Yokoyama. He said, and I quote, in those days, contests were extremely rough and frequently cost the participants their lives. Thus, whenever I sallied forth to take part in any of those affairs, I invariably bade farewell to my parents, since I had no assurance that I should ever return alive. So here you see uh, that it was such a serious thing to go and compete. It was like going to war. You did not know if you are go going to come back or not. The lack of rules made it very bad for these practitioners. People were thrown more than a dozen times in one match, landing on their heads, uh, suffering concussions, blacking out. That's how the match would finish or tapping out or r being rendered unconscious due to a strangle. Such things will either cause severe brain damage or death, as I mentioned uh, earlier. Um, Another thing that was discussed, it was by Wayne Muramoto, 
uh, he said, and I quote, the duels were probably closer to the in original intent of the word Shi'ai, which now means match or tournament, but once referred to Shini'ai. Shini, which comes from the verb Shinu or dying. So if you change the kanji of the Shi with the kanji of death, it was, which can mean, you know, the meeting of death or something very dark and extreme he continues to say i symbolically meet death itself there were no yuko or coca you scored with a full ipon point throws chokes hold ups or arm lock that would in actual situation completely overwhelm your opponent and the time limit was up to the judge you usually went until someone dropped from sheer exhaustion or the judge ended it, awarding the match to the clear victor. Truly, it was Shini Ai. End quote. So here you see from the late 1800s and even early 1900s how the reality of competing truly was up until the 1920s with the lack of equipments. You see how the police officer passed away simply from hitting his head. I personally had my head hit numerous times with techniques such as O Sotogari and Ippon Seoenage. So if it was equipped like in the past, probably I would have suffered something very dangerous. So in a way, I am very glad Judo is evolving when it comes to safety measures. But yes, I do have my problem with the Judo, such as banning leg grabs. Uh, limiting a little bit of newaza and restriction on a lot of the gripping but still it is a very efficient martial art that should not be taken lightly especially japanese jiu-jitsu you have people such as rokas from martial arts journey and matt thornton who says things like japanese jiu-jitsu and traditional martial arts have no resistance and they are obsolete and they simply do not work and personally i think these statements are not only ignorant but also ludicrous it shows the lack of knowledge of history of these martial arts particularly jiu-jitsu so to say that brazilian jiu-jitsu far exceeded japanese jiu-jitsu because of testing and uh, sparring is again ridiculous tearing ligaments doing excellent takedowns and pinning and having excellent groundwork dates back to the 19th century and not so much of what happened in brazil so this is a reminder of how things used to be and when it comes to safety measures we should all be glad that we have them today this was shady and thank you for listening <laughs>